Hello and welcome to Singapore for round two of the T100, the newest and most exciting triathlon world series on the planet. Jan Fredino is next to me still the fittest man on the planet, I'm going to say as well. He did a four hour bike ride this morning in torrential rain. Uh, you've dried out, Jan? That included a 90 minute puncture fix, so I still haven't mastered that bit. <laughs> There we go. He's alongside us and we have a 30 minute show for you to enjoy. And we're going to have uh, superstars of the T100 World Tour coming through our fake revolving door, starting with the newest winner of the 100K Club, India Lee, and the PTO T100 Queen herself, Ashley Gentle. Welcome, all of you. Welcome, Ash, to T100. Welcome back, India. You're still wearing a non-branded shirt. Does that mean you haven't got a sponsor? Uh, uh, things are in the works in the background, but yes. <laughs> and I mean, just talk to us about how you are feeling five weeks on now from that epic win, one of the best days of your career to date. Yeah, I'm feeling uh, quite good. The first week back at home after Miami was quite overwhelming. I had um, a lot of people offering their well wishes and I'm not, I'm not usually used to being the centre of attention, so that was a bit tricky, but I navigated that well and um, then got back to my normal daily routine of swim, bike and run. Apparently you were doing a lot of hiding in your pain cave, heating up the temperatures, getting ready for a hot and humid Singapore. Yeah, I spent a good, good chunk of time in the garage in a greenhouse, um, <laughs> uh, getting the humidity and the heat up to prepare for the conditions here and my first step outside the airport I thought yeah it's, I feel like I did a pretty good job in matching the conditions so hopefully it, that's worked. It was quite remarkable I mean at one stage it was top six Brits and I think in Miami and it was hot and humid and I'm like what is going on here? This is the opposite of a British winter and everybody's coming out of the woodworks charging. So well done on leading that charge. Thank you. But Ash is back now and she's here to oh. break up this British tea party, I like to call it, aren't you, Ash? Oh, that would be nice. There was a lot of Brits, um, you know, at the, the front of the race. But yeah, I actually really enjoyed seeing Indy Lee um, have that win. She's been working really hard and we've actually been racing each other for quite a long time now um, on the short course series and now together on the T100 series. So yeah, it's super nice to be back um, in amongst all the athletes. Do you feel like you're coming back as defending champion? Because that is technically what you're doing, even though it's the start of this new series. Yeah, I guess it's gonna be really interesting because it's completely different circumstances leading into this race. Um, for this race in 2024, it's my first race of the season and I've come off an Australian summer. Uh, last year in Singapore, I was very race fit, very ready to go, and I was actually coming down from altitude training in Boulder in Colorado. So, yeah, very different set of circumstances, but um, the intention's still the same, and I really hope that I can put a good performance forward. Do you feel maybe like you're a little bit late to the party because you didn't do round one? <laughs> Everyone's kind of got a head start on you. Yeah, a little bit, but I do think I made the right decision. Um, as an Australian who lives in Australia, the trip to Miami would have been, um, yeah, a really big one and I think it would have jeopardized the preparation for this race here in Singapore and I guess I probably wasn't exactly ready to be at my best in Miami so I wanted to make a smart decision and I think that was to be here at the first race and then look ahead at the whole rest of the T100 series and try and consistently perform from here on in. Um, yeah, so obviously you're looking at it differently, you're not just looking at one race, you're looking at the whole series. Have you kind of mapped out your plan a little bit? Any secrets you'll get in on? Yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, I definitely want to hit this race and it is the first race of the series for me, but um, it's one that I think, you know, can suit my strengths and I really hope that I can um, perform well. But yeah, in the back of my mind, I still think, you know, I've still got to be at my best at the end of November. Um, where there's one and a half points at the grand final. So I think I just need to stay really consistent, uh, healthy and injury free. And I think that um, I'm trying to work my way around the world from here. I'll go to America and then I'll go to Europe. I think I'll head back home before heading back overseas for Middle East. So I'm just trying to make sure I have a good amount of mix of intensity and also recovery after each race. Well, the women, they go off tomorrow, of course, at 2.15 local time. Can India go back to back or can Ash defend her title from last year? Come back and join us tomorrow to find out. Thanks so much, ladies.
Well, it is uh, stop number two on the World Tour. It's a new World Championship Series for T100, and this is how it works. Welcome to T100. This season, 20 of the world's best men's and women's professional triathletes will battle it out over the notorious 100-kilometer distance, consisting of 2-kilometer swim, 80-kilometer bike, and 18-kilometer run, the ultimate test of speed and endurance. Taking place across eight iconic locations around the globe, the season culminates with the T100 World Championship Finals in November. Every finishing position earns points, from one point for 20th to 35 points for first place. The T100 World Championship Finals will offer even more points to keep every athlete fighting until the end of the season. The total of each athlete's three best point scoring performances over the season, plus the final, will count towards their points total. The athlete with the highest points total at the end of the season will be crowned T100 World Champion. With a prize purse of $7 million on the line, it means that each race and every point scored will make a difference. Well, lots of money on the line, but possibly more importantly, the chance to be crowned world champion in this new series. And we have two guests joining us now who maybe one day in the future would also like to be world champions. Ejun and Dylan, both competing in the amateur race on Sunday. Welcome to both of you here. I mean, just tell us a little bit first, Ejun, about your backstory and why triathlon is the sport for you. Yeah, so uh, I actually started off as a swimmer and then um, last year I actually tried my first triathlon uh, and then now I'm in the national team. So I'm really enjoying the sport. <laughs> Impressive, Jan, don't you think? It, absolutely, that's a, that's a sharp rise. And here in, uh, in Singapore, is it nice to be at home and having inspiration, you know, some of the world's best athletes coming around and, uh, you know, showing you the way. Are you feeling inspired to go, to go and take it big? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think it's amazing. I think this experience is really cool. And I'm sure not just for me, but for uh, other athletes, other aspiring athletes in Singapore as well. Uh, young kids and uh, everyone. Yeah. Dylan, similar questions yourself. Where did it all start for you with uh, triathlon? Oh yeah, so for me, I actually started swimming and running quite young. Uh, I picked up cycling a few years ago and I came across triathlon being able to put all three together. So I didn't have to choose one over the other and that's how I got the triathlon. And you're both telling me off camera about some of your favorite athletes who are competing. Just tell us about some of the people that you're really excited to see kind of competing here in your home country. Yeah, so I'm a big fan of, on the female side, I'm a big fan of Lucy Charles Barkley. Aren't we all, Jan? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody loves the Lucy. <laughs> yep. And then on the male side, uh, I'm a big fan of Sam Long. Yeah. Yo, yo, yo. Yes. Dylan, yeah, how I'm about yourself? A, I'm also a big fan of Lucy Charles. Uh, I watch her videos on YouTube. And on the guy side, I'm actually a big fan of uh, Sam Laidlow. Yeah, because he's actually quite young and he's so talented. This guy's not too bad himself, is he? <laughs> oh, gone, <laughs> forgotten. Really, guys, I want to, I want to know, we've, we've been here a couple of days and I've been quite surprised at how good the training is here locally. I mean, there are a lot of amazing facilities, pools, um, bike tracks. Do you guys train mostly around here? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I do all my training locally and um, I mean we have a lot of great places. We have the PCN which is the Park Connector Network and uh, we have East Coast, uh, Sentosa, a lot of amazing views, uh, amazing roads and everything. So definitely, yeah. And Dylan, how big is the sport of triathlon here in Singapore? Because last year we saw lots of fans come out and enjoy it. Well, in Singapore it's actually a growing sport and we are actually quite happy to see that more and more people are, more and more people are taking up triathlon. So hopefully, like through all these events, we can see more and more people hopping onto the sport and then growing the sport as a whole. I know you also both do the short course. So Alistair yep. Brownlee is around here as well. Yes, you must know that him. legend as well. Two times yes. Olympic champion. I mean, what's it like to have the likes of Alistair here in your city? Oh, uh, amazing. I mean, I can't wait to see him race. Uh, and it's just so cool to even see him in real life. I should also yeah. mention you in that Olympic sentence. Did you remember watching him when he achieved gold? <laughs> okay, I'm holding a microphone. <laughs> like I said. <laughs> Come on, boys. What I want to yeah. hear um, Sunday, what's the plan? Who's going to win? Um, I think on a female side... Uh, no, no, you guys. I want to know you oh, guys. Well, we, well, the girls, oh. they, the, the women race on Saturday. <laughs> I want to know between you guys. Um... Well, we're doing different events, but um, I know that he's a really strong athlete. Uh, I've raced with him before, and we've also been to overseas races before, together before. So, 
Uh, I'm rooting for him. Yeah. Dil- Dylan has a confident look in his eyes. A very confident look. <laughs> I actually liked your question though because we do have a mystery pro on the show. So with that in mind, they could match them. Top three for the women's event. Who are you going for? Uh, I think definitely Lucy Charles Barkley, uh, India Lee, and Ashley Gentle. There we go. Well, let's uh, see if that comes true. It could be our mystery show. Pro, Ejun, Dylan, thank you so much. Good luck on Sunday. We've spoken a lot about the women's race already, but five weeks ago, we didn't Miami. just have the women in action. In it was the men's triathlon. chance to sign to shine as well, and it was very much Magnus who had a spectacular day in Miami. G100 Miami in a new era of triathlon as the very first T-100 about to take to the water. With the win, Magnus Dittler is closing that gap on Magirier and Brownlee. Sam Long is really moving through this field. Down to 15 athletes in this race, there is no way to hide. The racetrack temp is 110 degrees Fahrenheit. He's just such a strong, continuous these And for the lead, here comes Magnus Ditliff trying to take the top spot away from Alistair Brownlee. Magnus Ditliff, the first ever winner of the T100. Well, let's start building up now to the men's race, which takes place on Sunday, an hour later as well. The women's at 3.15 local time here. And with that in mind, let's introduce our winner from Miami. We just saw him crossing the finish line there, Magnus Ditlev. Um, First question, can you show your arm to camera um, and tell us what has happened? Yeah, so I arrived in Singapore Monday morning. I had a good training day Monday, went out for a bike ride Tuesday and Unfortunately, it crashed on my bike. Uh, it was entirely my own fault, but uh, yeah, went to hospital and got some scans on especially the wrist that showed a fracture uh, in the wrist. So it looks like I'm unfortunately not going to be able to race this time. That's really terrible, sorry to hear. Um, have you done any inquiries about the injury? What does it mean for the rest of the season? I mean, it's obviously annoying to come all the way to Singapore and we're sad to not see you race. But of course, it's a series. You've got early points. Uh, what does it mean for the rest of your season? You think? Yeah. So PTO uh, must say took really good care of me and arranged the doctor and scans and everything really quickly. So that was uh, amazing. And we sent the images back to some specialists in Denmark as well, and they looked at it. And it, it's like luckily a really stable fracture. So it's not like the bones are laying like in different directions and everything. So it doesn't need surgery or anything. Just time. Uh, and they are pretty optimistic that I'll be able to ride my bike very quick. Uh, like I can probably already do that in the uh, aero bars at the moment and running should also be very quickly back. So the swimming is a little bit a question mark, but I think elite athletes tend to heal really quickly. <laughs> so I'm hoping it <laughs> tend won't. to find ways to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Jack Kelly is here as well. He's going to commentate for us uh, over the course of this weekend. Uh, Jack, you always have eyes and ears around the triathlon community. Uh, how are they all feeling that Magnus is no longer taking part on Sunday? Yeah, well, I just had a conversation with Sam Long. He was happy about it. Fred, <laughs> Funk, <laughs> Fred Funk was extra happy about it. Uh, I think a lot of people are starting to fear Magnus and the way he races. People are starting to look at you as a little bit of a robot, not really human. They just know that when Magnus races, he's going to deliver the same thing every time, which is going to be a consistently very high uh, performance. Uh, So I think with Magnus out of the race, it opens things up a lot. Like I think Magnus was a guy who, even if he didn't win, he was going to be on the podium, and most people just thought that. Even on a course that maybe isn't truly you know, the best course for Magnus, he was still going to be up there. So it opens the door for a lot of people. And I think a lot of people who maybe were afraid of Magnus are now approaching the race with a bit more excitement. I mean, Magnus, you came to talk to me yesterday and you kind of thought I was going to race at some point. Did someone literally say it would be stupid to go out there and race? Uh, I think elite athletes are always stupidly optimistic (laughs) about what they can do. But yeah, it became clear after I tried to ride uh, on the turbo trainer that I wasn't really able to put weight on the handlebar. So that obviously on a technical course is not uh, the best thing. So, Are you going to consider riding with handlebar tape from now on? <laughs> Maybe Please. in uh, conditions like these, uh, yeah, for sure. Jan, would you have raced? 
I don't know, as a professional athlete, you're always looking for that very fine gap between highly unlikely and impossible. And it's, you know, that, that door doesn't exactly stand still either. And I can totally understand where you were, that conundrum, the sleepless nights, you try it, you try it again. If it's good, was it that good? I mean, it's forever a discussion. And I think you made a smart move. You're a smart guy, um, no doubt about it. And I think that's why the field fears you because you, you make smart decisions. Because if you do race and something makes it complicated that could implicate the season more so I tip my hat off I don't think I would have been I, I don't know if I would have been as smart as you put it that way <laughs> the fact that Jan is now saying that does that make you feel slightly better about the decision yeah, yeah it's always uh, good when Jan uh, agrees with you <laughs> <laughs> there we go well uh, Magnus we hope actually you'll join us at some point over the course of the weekend as well because the race is lost is very much commentary's gain I'm going to say and you can give us some some details about exactly what these athletes are feeling in there alongside Jan it would be great yeah I'm happy to assist in any, any way I can Awesome. Well, we wish you a very speedy recovery and hopefully we get to see you back out there in San Fran because at least we do have May off in terms of racing on the T100 tour. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, boys, we're going to do a little switcheroo. <laughs> Mics are going to go that side. We're going to lose you two. Safe recovery. We're going to bring in two more guests. I told you we're having Thank a you. revolving door Thanks. around here. Alistair Brownlee, Sam Long, yo, yo, yo. Boys, on your marks, please. Here Not quite get set go, but we do have marks here. Welcome, Sam Long. Jack Kelly stirring the pot there. Um, he said that you are happy that Magnus is no longer racing. Is that true or is that false? Uh, I would not use the word happy. I, I don't think you ever want to be. Stirring the pot, I told you. <laughs> yeah, that's what he likes to do. <laughs> I, would, I would say you're never happy at another athlete's misfortune. But at the same time, from a competitive standpoint, uh, I suppose you could say any, any of the contenders on the start list gives you another opportunity. But I do always hope to beat people at their best. So, yeah, I would not use the word happy. How are you feeling? You've back to back. You've just done a race. Uh, how many days? Five, six days ago. Uh, about to go throw your hat in the ring again. How's the body feeling? Yeah, six days ago. So certainly the body felt pretty bad the first three, four, five days even. It's just starting to come around. I think a mix of travel, jet lag, and then, yeah, just getting over the race. But I do believe that the race hardens me and, and makes me a better racer and just got to get the mind ready to, you know, go into the jungle and get ready to party again. <laughs> Talking of jungles, you've been in Malaysia, haven't you, Alistair, for the last couple of weeks, prepping for this, pretty much leaving no stone unturned on your quest to, I guess, get better at dealing with the heat, because we saw what happened last time. This man here, as you went out onto the run from T2, just said, has he overcooked it again? Is he going out too fast? I, I was rooting for you the was. way. I was actually cheering for you. <laughs> How has, though, the last couple of weeks in Malaysia dealing with the conditions been for you? Yeah, well, obviously, um, this race here has got a very unique kind of uh, conditional element, which is the heat, humidity, and, um, yeah, I wanted to prepare for this. I, I knew um, uh, Miami was going to be a bit of a throw of the dice. I basically had four weeks to train for that race uh, after being on holiday and busy in January and thought uh, I'm going to actually train for it and you know there's only so much you can do you can't get fit and heat acclimatized and get fast and so I chose to got, get fit and not heat acclimatized and was praying for it to be a bit cooler um, and it wasn't unfortunately uh, so yeah for this one I've tried to prepare for the conditions a bit more and um, yeah, spent the last 10 days or so in Malaysia uh, training in the heat. The first three or four days were horrific and didn't, didn't go very well and um, was a repeat of Miami on a few occasions, although I actually actually walked. And um, yeah, I've, the last week or so has been better, I think. Yeah, adapted a little bit. You, the, go the, on. Course, the course here seems to be much more suited probably to, to your strength in general, I would say. It's technical, there is some climbing despite, you know, the there's steep bridges but there's still some climbing and technical elements um you feeling good about this course yeah i actually uh i haven't looked at the bike course at all so uh <laughs> i don't know what it's like I'm, my plan is to watch the women's race tomorrow and try and get as much uh, information as i can but yeah i think it is yeah a uh, bit more technical definitely helps uh the wet would help you know getting the corners nice and sketchy for everyone and um the hills are good as well um but yeah I, I actually quite enjoyed that course in miami it's more technical than it looks and i actually think yeah. the the corners had more of an impact um you know i i basically could have a rest around all the corners because i was a bit fast around them so um yeah i think it probably had more of an impact than you think 
Sam, question for you as well. Um, you gave everyone quite a fright in Miami because you were quite late to racking your bike. Maybe you kind of almost missed it, didn't you, uh, in terms of racking bike. There was a video about you saying, was he going to race, was he not, because he was late to the party. Are you going to tell everyone what time you might be racking your bike on Sunday, or shall we just wait and see if you turn up? I just got my tips from Jan. That's what Jan always used to do when he would race. He'd show up like two minutes before the gun goes off, you know, but... Uh, Setting a great example there, Jan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's Mr. Mr. Preparation over here. I'm not yeah. sure about that. But, uh, I mean, yeah, I guess uh, I was actually out riding my bike, warming up. So I, I, I was preparing. And I guess here, I mean, I probably will try and rack my bike as late as possible to stay out of the heat. So maybe I will give everyone a scare again. <laughs> Alistair, another question for you as well. I actually mentioned this to you when we chatted earlier on the week. The fact that every single... PTO slash T100 event that you've done, because you've done quite a few of them now, you've actually led coming out of T2. Are you going to ever change the tactics, or are you this, well, this certain is, they're going to work? This, uh, this fact, fact depressed me so much, I've actually gone back <laughs> and done some thinking about it. So technically, I didn't lead out in Miami, I was second and only got to the front about a K okay. into the run. Uh, didn't lead out in <laughs> read didn't homework. lead out in Ibiza, I was also second and got to the front about a K <laughs> in the run. <laughs> Uh, Edmonton, I don't think I ever led in Edmonton. I don't think I ever got to the front, but I was kind of nearly there. Well, we're uh, all right, right so it's not great. But <laughs> yeah, the, the principle down. is the same. Yeah. I, I, uh, no, yeah. I've got one goal for this race, and that's not blow up. <laughs> so you're not going to do the first K in 250? <laughs> oh, no, it, yeah, but first. in Miami it was 325. Oh, really? It just okay. looked a lot faster than it was. It was honestly, it was slow. <laughs> oh, gosh. So you guys are obviously taking the race from yeah. kind of op opposite perspectives, right? You're uh, lead, looking to lead the swim, heading out. It's probably. I see a couple of guys who can go with you. Sam trying to close the gap. Um, where do you see it, Sam? What do you, I mean, you, that's the strategy, right? But where yeah, do you I see mean, it closing? Usually when I, when I race Ali, you know, I kind of think to myself, I either see him or I don't. <laughs> um, and there's, yeah, there's not really, it's kind of out of my control, right? I, I have to do my own race and, and just be as strong as I can. And, and if we find ourselves in a run battle, then, then that's an amazing thing. But uh, there's pretty much, a hundred percent certainty that we're not going to swim together and we're not going to bike together <laughs> well i mean well done anyways on coming to the claim of bringing the strongest legs to triathlon which makes it very exciting for all of us to watch yeah it's all i mean it's always a, it's always a grind from the back <laughs> <laughs> both of you thank you very much for your time today we'll see you on sunday good luck thank in you. that race thanks very much Okay, we've done Miami. We're now in Singapore. We really are treating you to some beautiful locations on the T100 tour, and we're not done just yet. Yeah, we are really treating you this year with this tour. We are going to some absolutely stunning locations. But Singapore is up next for you. Two races to look forward to. Let's talk more about the men's race now because we have Sam Laidlow joining us. Jack is back as well uh, to join the party here. Thank you for your time. I mean, let's just start off nice and easily. Uh, are you feeling pretty good? You've been in Singapore for a couple of days to acclimatise. How has prep gone for you? Yeah, I feel I feel better than I did in Miami. Uh, slowly building back up after after last year, um, an eventful end of year. Um, so yeah, I've been here two weeks and um, pretty glad I came early to be honest because last week was was scorching hot. I guess the main question, in your own words, you said you blew up on the run in Miami. Uh, how are you going to do things differently this time out? Uh, be a bit a little, a little bit fitter. Yeah, just <laughs> show up a little bit fitter than I was in Miami. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Obviously, this humidity is. It's not really to my advantage. I, I sweat a lot, and so as long as I can get enough fluid down, I should be should be all right. But um, yeah, also very different dynamics without Magnus probably. Um, and yeah, I couldn't play an active role at the front of the race in Miami, um, and I normally like to I normally like to do so with Alistair. So I hope we can get back to that. 
Reigning Ironman World Champion. I mean, you kind of hinted towards it. There's a lot of extra things on your plate, a lot of extra uh, items on your calendar. I, was, I mean, honestly, I was quite impressed in Miami. You know, it's hard to get that fit early. I think you've done a good job. How do you, how do you feel about it? I mean, it's life. how's life? Life is good, as you said. It's busy, but I tried to make it busy as much as possible towards the end of last year. And, um, yeah, I guess, like, I have other things around just triathlon, so I'm trying to trying to prioritize everything and then slowly build towards the end of season and hopefully both in uh, Hawaii and then the grand final I'll be uh, in my peak shape. Uh, yeah, and I still have, a, I guess, something to learn from the guys like Christian or Magnus that can be good all year long. Well, I, I, think, have, yeah, I right. have an oddly specific question for you, Sam. So at Miami, you put on your calf socks and then you sort of lost about 45 seconds to a minute and then you made that up right by the end of the bike. What are you going to do here in the heat in Singapore? Are you going to wear them or are you going to uh, not and, and stay with the front of the group early out of T1? Well, that was, I think everybody was expecting me to put socks in there and I wasn't going to, but now you've just shed my secret. And <laughs> no, yeah, I probably won't put them on here. It took me, uh, it took me a lot. It took me like 70K of time trialing yeah. to get back to the front. So um, yeah, that was a painful, painful decision. Uh, so yeah, as I said, I want to be up front. I think that's how I race. And I heard you ask like Ali, like, will he, will he not set out first? You know, and I don't think it's just our instinct you know we, that's how we race at our best and if we lose we lose it doesn't it's not a big deal and then every so often it pays off and so with that even though everyone's talking about the crazy conditions and you know being conservative you're going to race just like normal well i still believe one of my strengths is like riding in the heat so um i think i also need to make the most of it you know i'm not gonna run as fast as some of the jason west or, or yuri Killens, so i need to make the most of the bike um and I, i'll run at my level here you know so i can't i can't expect to race how they're going to race and um yeah as i said i'll just i'll just enjoy racing aggressively uh and see what comes out as a fan of the sport looking from the outside you kind of look at the dream team you ali carl smith i would put in there swim bike i mean if it rains even more so all three of you very aggressive all three of you technically very good riders anyone else you have in that group um well, Mikhail uh, had a pretty good race last year here. He was pretty aggressive early on, and I think his bike handling skills are, or at least I went riding out with him, and he seemed to take a few risks on the bike path that uh, <laughs> uh, didn't go unnoticed. But, um, yeah, I think we're missing Matisse for sure. Uh, he, I've been racing him since I've been a kid, and we're generally at the front of the races. So, yeah, shame he's not here, uh, but I'll hope to replace what, what he did in, um, in Miami. Hopefully you don't have to do it all by yourself. <laughs> I guess season's coming into play a little bit as well. We're talking about kind of how athletes are working out the season being so long. Are you pinpointing places that you want to get kind of maximum points so you can kind of taper off and then peak again to the end of the season? How does your year look? Uh, yeah, I wish I could pick and choose like when I want to be fit. It just as it took me like three or four months to get over Nice last year. Um, and yeah, as I said, I'll just like, after this, I have a good 12 week block to really get to, to where I want, I think, uh, or at least a good first stepping stone. Um, so I think I'll be, I'll be fit in London and I should be fit in Ibiza. Um, I'll probably uh, sit out uh, San Fran. Yeah. yeah, I mean, sounds like a smart plan in terms of travel as well and scheduling it. And hopefully going to the United States at the end of the <laughs> year. Um, all that considered, how are you feeling um, about the overall series? I mean, it's definitely kind of a different thought process the end of the year, last race, points and a half. Um, so many new dynamics come, coming into it. How do you approach one individual race, you know? Yeah, it's, um, it's certainly like shaking, shaking things up a bit. Um, and I think we're kind of going towards this, this profile of athlete that needs to be good all year round, which is something that I've got to learn. Um, and I think it's something that the short course athletes are used to. And obviously I haven't been through that that short course kind of career so um yeah it's going to be a slow adaptation for me personally um but yeah we'll see i think it's just now you need to be a full-time professional athlete you know if you want to be if you want to be good you can't afford to go and spend three weeks in barbados at the end of the year or something <laughs> well it may be a slow adaptation to you but there is nothing slow about the t100 it's going to be fast it's going to be furious and the racing is coming your way on saturday and sunday sam thank you so much jack thank you jan as well uh, all this crew will be back throughout the weekend but as i mentioned the races women's race tomorrow 2 15 local time and then on sunday an hour later 3 15 the men go racing here in Singapore for round two of the T100. We'll see you then. Bye bye.